This is Hero's Acre, a national monument on the edge of Harare, where leaders of Zimbabwe's war against white minority rule in the 1970s are buried. And this is the grave of Sally Mugabe, Robert Mugabe's first wife, who died of kidney failure in 1992. But what interests me are the two grave sites next to hers, because both of them are empty. I presume that one will be for Mugabe himself, but what of the other one? Will it be for Grace Mugabe, the president's second wife? Or for Emerson Munungagwa, Zimbabwe's vice president and the man who's been Mugabe's brutal enforcer through the 36 years of his rule? Or could it be for Joyce Majuru, who was Zimbabwe's vice president until she was expelled from Mugabe's ruling ZANU PF party two years ago? Joyce Majuru now leads an opposition party, but she would have a claim to the grave site because buried right here is her husband, Solomon Majuru, another lifelong Mugabe ally until he fell out of favour and was mysteriously murdered in 2011. I've come to Zimbabwe because Mugabe, the world's oldest head of state at 92, is clearly nearing the end of his days and his wife, Munan Gagwa and Joyce Majuru are now waging a vicious and surprisingly public campaign to succeed him. I've come because at the same time Zimbabwe's economy is imploding. Its industrial base is collapsing, factories are closing, the country is quite literally running out of money and ordinary Zimbabweans are having to queue from before dawn each day to withdraw whatever dollars they can before the supply runs out. I've come because ordinary Zimbabweans are beginning for the first time to fight back. They're using social media to harness the public's anger. They are daring to protest against their dictatorial regime in a way that they seldom have before. For several years now, Zimbabwe has been eclipsed by momentous events elsewhere in the world. But one way or another, sooner rather than later, I suspect it's going to be back in the spotlight.